Chapter 651 Inviting the Elite Lei Hong Wu, the person that Wang Yuhang mentioned, was in the shelter on the opposite side of the Devil's Mountain. All they would have to do was cross those perilous mountains to find him. But Hansen decided to return to the Alliance first, so he could adequately prepare for the journey. Upon going back, Hansen looked at his communicator and noticed that he had received many unanswered calls and messages. There were a few from Ji Yin An, Tang Jin Lu, and Huang Fu Ping Ching, all acquaintances of his. Hansen called them back one by one, and the subject of each call was Ji Qing having killed a super creature. It was an event that shocked every high rank member of the Alliance who knew about it. It hadn't yet been announced to the public, however. Hansen did not reply directly to Ji Yinran's message and instead went to see her at her office. Ji Yin and told Hansen that Ji Qing did indeed slay a super creature. Although the feat was achieved with the aid of an additional 300 evolvers, it was she who delivered the final blow. The super creature did not leave behind a body, only a life geno essence. Hansen already knew that most super creatures wouldn't leave behind a corpse. Only a few of them would, and this was one of the many traits that made the existence of super creatures so intriguing. Just like Golden Roarer and Young Golden Roars, they were special. The Young Golden Roarer became a beast soul, different to all other beast souls. A normal riding beast soul, even if it was a super creature beast soul, would not be aggressive. But the Young Golden Roarer was, which was different to all other mounts. Hansen did not know why super creatures had such varying traits and personalities, and it was something he thought about every day, in some capacity. Now, the whole world was still discussing the existence of super creatures. But Hansen knew this was just the beginning, and if the Alliance were to make the announcement, things would only get crazier and crazier. Although Ji Yin and did not tell him exactly, Hansen knew that the Ji family would announce the news. They would proudly proclaim that the Ji family were the first to ever slay a super creature, and that it would be written down in history. It would be a great help for Ji Ruajin when he asserted his position as leader of the Alliance. Although Ji Ruajin would gain numerous other benefits from this event, it practically guaranteed his election. It was a most honorable thing, after all. Before Hansen returned to the shelter, he called Zhang Danfeng and talked for a while, too. Zhang Danfeng had almost managed to max out his sacred Geno Point level. Hansen told him about Super Geno Points so he could prepare for more progression in the future. Hansen was no stranger to the road that wound its way up and over the Devil's Mountain. It wasn't likely bad things would occur on his passage, but just in case, he brought Zero and the Silver Fox with him. After all, Wang Yuhang was also coming. God knows what would happen with him in tow, especially here on the Devil's Mountain. It was a mystic range, shrouded in a fog of unanswered mysteries and the unknown. It was said many terrifying monsters lurked in the crevices and valleys, occupying the lesser tread trails in anticipation of any unfortunate ramblers. They exercised much caution along the way, and Wang Yuhang said the less he tried to aggro monsters, the less likely they were to suffer bad luck. With the silver fox there, they hadn't met a single creature. And so far, Wang Yuhang's miserable luck had yet to sour their course. Zero was clad in a white battle suit, holding the silver fox. She looked really cute, and even Wang Yuhang said she was the most adorable girl he had ever laid his insatiable eyes upon. Hansen quickly pulled Wang Yuhang away from her. The last thing he wanted was his creepy uncle getting close with Zero. They had reached the other side of the mountain when Wang Yuhang took the lead, bringing them to Devil's Shelter. There, they met with Lei Hung Wu who had just arrived, himself. Old Lei. Wang Yuhang opened the door to the man's room and started waving to a burly old man who looked like a jaded tower built of steel. Yuhang, why are you here? The strong man, after seeing Wang Yuhang, changed his initial look of displeasure to one of forced happiness. Old Lei, I have come here to look after you. I have recently become a member of a most talented team that is preparing to hunt down super creatures, Wang Yuhang explained, with great enthusiasm drenching every syllable. Lei Hung Wu looked surprised. Not about the super creatures, though. He looked at Wang Yuhang with eyes of disbelief and asked, You? You joined a team that tasks itself with hunting super creatures? Everyone who had ever met Wang Yuhang quickly met the bad luck that followed him, as well. To hunt with Wang Yuhang was almost a guarantee of terrible things happening. Other people had actually taken advantage of his bad luck as well to attract certain monsters. 
But the problem was, most, if not all, the creatures he attracted were too strong for any ordinary team to handle. As such, every hunt alongside the man resulted in absolute disaster. With an almost certain chance of losing everything each time, no one dared hunt with the man anymore. Yes, and allow me to wax lyrical in regards to the team I have joined, for it is quite possibly composed of the most talented warriors to be found in these lands and beyond. I have come here in the hopes of inviting you to join our ranks, on account of us being old friends. If you join us, we are sure to become the first team that kills a super creature here in the second shelter. Wang Yuhang was selling the team as well as anyone could. Whose team did you join? It cannot be one from your Wang family, surely. Lei Hung was seemed to be convinced by what Wang Yuhang had told him. After all, a team that was willing to accept a man like Wang Yuhang had to be quite remarkable. Come. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Bosman Han Senator, he is incredible. He can slay super creatures all by himself. If the super creature we fought had not escaped, we would have been the first to slay one and rob Ji Qing of her snobbish thunder. Wang Yuhang did not bluff at all about this statement. Han Sen? Lei Hung Wu frowned as if he was straining his mind trying to recall if he had ever heard of this person. There is no need to think that hard. Ji Ruajin is Han Sen's father-in-law. Wang Yuhang could see his interest suddenly begin to wane, so he blinked to prompt Hansen into saying something. Lei Hung Wu's face suddenly lit up in surprise. After Wang Yuhang had introduced them both, Lei Hung Wu invited them all into the room proper so they could discuss the team in greater detail. Leader Han, I am curious to know if there are any other prestigious members of fame or notoriety on your team. After Lei Hang Wu unlocked his gene lock, he didn't want to join any team, guild, or faction right away. He wanted to wait and join a band of closer, more powerful individuals. If Hanston was Ji Ruajin's son-in-law, Lei Hang Wu considered him a family member of the Ji family no matter which way it was cut. The Ji family already had Ji Qing, a certified super creature slayer. Although that was in the first shelter, it must have still been quite the feat and show of talent. As such, he wouldn't decline the proposition of being invited onto a team of the Ji family. We do not have a great many members in our ranks just yet, but those that we do have are good. We don't just accept anyone onto our team, either. To join us in our hunts, we only consider the best of the best. In fact, Bossman is already in the process of enlisting a few other high-ranking elites in the second shelter. You've heard of the Queen, yes? Bossman pretty much has her locked in. Wang Yuhang spoke quickly, as he was afraid Hansen would be quick to tell the truth. If Hansen did, Lei Hung Wu would shoot down their request in flames. Really? The queen is joining your team? Lei Hang Wu asked, with wide open eyes that kept jumping between Hansen and Wang Yuhang. This strange uncle isn't always honest, by the looks of things. Hansen smiled and did not say anything further. He had only mentioned the queen's name once, and there was no guarantee she would be willing to join. Wang Yuhang was skipping ahead and using this possibility as leverage. Of course I'm not lying. Old Lei, you assuredly know how much I value our relationship. Am I the sort of person who would be willing to lie to you? Wang Yuhang bore a righteous face as he said this. Chapter 652. Rejected. The quartet were busily discussing matters inside the house. Lei Hung Wu was still a little hesitant about joining, and despite Wang Yuhang's proclamations, the queen wasn't 100% guaranteed to join. How about you give me some time to think things over? Lei Hung Wu ultimately said. Old Lei, come on. What more convincing do you require? The boss man here is sitting on two royal shelters. One of them is the Mystery Island. Even. He has several powerful men under his command. So joining us is a win-win for you. Wang Yuhang pleaded. Although Wang Yuhang was being economical with his truths, he never outright lied. It was a sound strategy, nothing more. Like Hansen having not married Ji Yin, and yet, he wasn't an actual family member of the Ji family. The queen hadn't said she would join the team yet, either. And although Hansen owned two royal shelters, they were both being developed in association with the other factions. While Lei Hengwu hesitated, a knock came from outside the door. A soft and attractive voice sounded from behind it, saying, Is Mr. Lei here? It is Lu Hui who has come to visit. Lei Hung Wu was quite surprised. He offered them seats and went to answer the door. The person standing in the doorframe was of a gentle build and gave a relaxed smile. He gave the impression of the next-door brother you could always rely on. Why is Leader Lu here? 
The reason Lei Hung Wu had actually come to the shelter was so he could join Lu Hui's team. Lu Hui was really powerful and famous amongst the Evolvers. He commanded many strong subordinates and had a background related to the Blue Blood Special Forces. His prestigious background and standing was why Lei Hung Wu considered joining him first. But Lei Hang Wu had not gone seeking Lu Hui yet, which was why it was a surprise Lu Hui had come to see him instead. This flattered Lei Hung Wu greatly. Lu Hui saw Hansen, smiled, and said, Mr. Lei's guests, in that event, I shan't remain past my welcome, and I'll be direct. I hereby invite you to join my team. Do you accept? Lei Hung Wu was petrified. Although he had already guessed this was the reason he had shown up at his door, it was another thing altogether to hear such a request come from the man himself. Old Lei, but what of our own discussions? You cannot bail on us now. Wang Yuhang said, standing up. Lei Heng Wu turned around and looked at him, saying, When did I agree? Nothing has been settled yet. Wang Yuhang's mind frantically raced for something to say, but Hansen stopped him. He stood up and said, Mr. Lei, we would really appreciate your presence on our team. And I promise you, the chances of us slaying super creatures are extremely high. Therefore, I hope you will be willing to join us. Lei Hung Wu stuttered. Both sides had their merits and both offered strong reasons for him to join. Therefore, he was unable to make a decision so rapidly. Hansen, I have heard of your name. I am Lu Hui. Lu Hui walked in front of Hansen and presented his hand to him, smiling. You are the Blue Blood Devil leader? I have heard of you. Also, Hansen reached out his hand to shake Lu Hui's and felt the strength of the man's fingers. If it is possible, I would appreciate your presence in my team, as well. No matter the cost, provided you are willing to join, I am willing to accept any of your own terms and conditions. Lu Hui asked with genuine sincerity, looking at Hans Sr. I thank you for your invitation, but you took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to tell you the same thing, Hansen said. They both eyed each suspiciously for a second and then looked away. Lu Hui smiled and responded, Mr. Lei, whichever team you end up selecting will be a fine choice. Of course, if you do decide to join mine, I am willing to provide you a few additional benefits as a prize for picking the correct answer. After that, Lu Hui presented Lei Hung Wu a contract to gaze over. As he looked at it, his face dropped with shock. Leader Lu, is this for real? After you sign it, yes, Lu Hui softly replied. Old Lei, whatever conditions he offers, we will do the same but better. Wang Yuhang nervously proclaimed. Hansen then pulled out his contract to show Lei Hung Wu and said, This is our team's contract. The terms and conditions are there in full. Please, take a look. Wang Yuhang looked quite anxious now because he had already signed the contract and knew it was hardly fair and quite frankly, unappealing. There weren't any benefits to attract people, either. Lu Hui had presented a contract laden with gifts. With Lu Hui's reputation backing it, it was something quite difficult to turn down. As expected, Lei Hung Wu returned the contract to Hansen after a good look, apologized, and said, Leader Han, I must apologize. The reason I came to this shelter was in the hope of joining Leader Lu's team. He has also been gracious enough to offer me an abundance of benefits and gifts if I joined him. That's okay. Hansen smiled. He stood up and prepared to leave with those who accompanied him. Wang Yuhang wanted to say something else to Lei Hung Wu, but Hansen stopped him. Leader Han, I hope one day we will be able to work together, Lu Hui said with a serious tone when Hansen walked past him. We will. Hansen did not hate this man. It was a competition and he lost out, fair and square. They left Lei Hung Wu's house, and with a depressed look and tone of voice, Wang Yuhang said, that old Lei is no good. He didn't show me any respect. Hansen smiled and said, I think Lei Hung Wu is afraid of you, and that's why he didn't want to join our team. How can you blame me for this? It's all because our contractual benefits are worse. Wang Yuhang said this, but in his heart, he did truly fear that it was his own presence that made Lei Hung Wu unwilling to join. It will be too difficult to pull people away from big factions, no matter what we do. How about we instead walk around the market? It didn't really matter to Hansen that they were unable to enlist Lei Hung Wu. The most important reason for him to be at the shelter was the potential purchase of a sacred blood T-Rex beast soul. From what Hansen could see, although Lei Hang Wu was strong, he was simply strong. That was it. There was nothing inherently special or unique about him, and so Hansen did not consider him a primary choice, anyway. 
Even if he was a really useful person, Hansen wasn't willing to treat any team member better than the others. He wanted everyone to be of equal importance. After Hansen had gone, Liu Wei looked at Lei Hengwu and asked, Why did you not choose Hansen? Lei Hengwu, with a wry smile, answered, I am aware of who Hansen is. He is strong, yes, but he lacks support. I felt bad to reject him, with Wang Yuhang here. And besides, with that man's miserable luck, I cannot imagine how they might ever fell a super creature. Liu Wei was the boss of this area and the shelter was at the center. The population here was far healthier than the ice fields. The big markets were always super crowded. It would take the trade rates of 10 goddess shelters to match the trade rate of this place. If we can establish a proper trade route across Devil's Mountain, perhaps it would aid in the development of the goddess shelter. Hansen thought to himself, despite the difficulties a project such as that would pose. Hansen alone had met two super creatures on Devil's Mountain. If he did want to develop a tunnel that led beneath the mountain and out the other side, no one had the resources necessary for such an undertaking. He walked around many beast soul stores and eventually found a suitable beast soul. The T-Rex beast soul was a rare type, too. Chapter 653. I'll buy it. It was a black T-Rex beast soul. Its name was Rex Spike. It was a heavy metal weapon that was about two meters long. From the booklet provided, the weapon looked like a giant umbrella that was folded. The end was sharp and it had a hilt at the bottom. It was a violent and visceral heavy metal weapon. It was two meters long and the handle was 50 centimeters long. The front was sharp and serrated, and from afar, one would guess it was a strange great sword or medieval lance, but not quite. It was weird, yes, but it looked like a cruel and merciless weapon. Without a moment's hesitation, Hansen wanted to purchase that weapon. He liked it a lot, due to it being both heavy and long. Going up against a super creature with something like this, with a bit more range, was far better than using a puny dagger. It was a black T-Rex beast soul, but he could not tell if it was associated with the element of fire. To Hansen, though, what he saw was enough to prompt him to buy it at once. The beast soul was cheaper than the other sacred blood beast souls available, too. That was primarily due to the fact that this weapon type wasn't all that popular. He could use it as a lance, but the handle was too short. That was okay, though, because most lance skills could not be cast with Rex Spike. Anyway, he could use it like a sword, but the blade did not look like a traditional one, which would prevent him from casting sword skills with it. Additionally, the weapon was so heavy, ordinary evolvers would not even be able to lift it. Due to these issues, the price had been reduced and Hansen was more than happy to buy it at the price listed, without needing to haggle. After all, it was rare to see T-Rex be souls of a weapon type. It was a heavy weapon, too, which was something that would be useful for Han Sr. If he'd had a Super Rex spike when he went to hunt the Firescale T-Rex, he wouldn't have had as much trouble as he did. After buying the Rex spike, Hansen no longer had any need to peruse the markets. He left and went to find a place he could stay. When he was in his room, he observed the Rex Spike and Gem Beast Soul intently. They are both Rex type. Aside from the fact that the Rex Spike has no wings, the similarities in design and appearance are striking. Although it may not have a fire element, the success rate should still be high. Right? Hansen gritted his teeth while he mulled over the question. He did not want to overthink things, so he immediately attempted to combine the Gem Beast Soul with the Rex Spike. God, Buddha, Goddess, Mary, Jesus, and Muhammad, bless me with your divinity. I only have this one super gem beast soul. Throughout the entirety of my life, this is the only one I have ever managed to get. So, please, help me. Hansen's heart prayed intently to every god and religious deity he could think of. Inside the gem, he watched the image of the mini fire scale T Rex be attracted and absorbed into an image of a black T Rex. Then, the black T-Rex roared to the sky as its body underwent a transformation of some kind. The black scales of the beast became dark red. The body began to smoke and the talons increased in sharpness and thickness. Its head also grew in size. Overall, the T-Rex looked to be considerably stronger. Roar The T-Rex let out a horrible roar as a geyser of flame shot out of its mouth. Then, it took off in flight. It was just a virtual image, coming from the Sea of Soul. It did not spit out real fire, because if it did, the entire house would have been little more than smoldering cinders by that point. Rex Spike has successfully combined with Firescale T-Rex Gemstone. 
The evolution has provided you a flaming Rex Spike Super Beast Soul. Hansen almost jumped up in happiness. He quickly summoned the flaming Rex Spike and immediately saw that it had increased in length. It was now certainly longer than two meters. It was colored a dark red and encircled in an aura of flame. The weapon now looked even more wretched and cruel, like some violent beast. Hansen swung it twice. He randomly hit something, which spawned a beautiful array of sparks. Hansen really liked it. It was a super heavy weapon, and its presence was intimidating. In the future, he would have no problem tearing the bodies of smaller monsters apart. If I shoved this big guy up the asshole of a super creature, they'd feel awesome. Without hesitation, Hansen fed a black crystal to the flaming wreck spike. He wanted to make it as strong as possible and try to push it up to a berserk super beast soul. If he did that, it would be even easier for him to kill a super creature. After the flaming wreck swallowed the black crystal, a strange spirit exited its body and encompassed it. Hansen had never evolved a super beast soul before, so he was not sure how long this process would take. Hansen did not evolve the dead eye peacock yet because he had been using it often, and he was not sure how long the evolution process would take. Therefore, he did not feed it a black crystal. Now he was willing to let the flaming wreck spike evolve first, since he still had the peacock crossbow. Hansen also wanted to find a hypergeno art that was suitable for his future use of the flaming wreck spike while it continued to evolve. The weapon could not be used as a sword or a lance, therefore, it was difficult to find a hypergeno art that suited it. Hansen was overjoyed at the successful combination. He decided to walk around with Zero for a while longer, buying her some new clothes and snacks as they went. The silver fox was lying on Hansen's shoulder while Zero cuddled the pet Meowth. The contrast of black and white pets side by side was a charming sight. Those pets are so beautiful. Honey, look. A woman with big boobs pointed at Hansen in delightful surprise. I will buy it. The man near her was really calm, and when he softly spoke the sentence, the woman became ecstatic. Oh, honey, you are so good. The woman clutched the man's arms and kissed him on the cheek. Friend, how much for these pets? The man walked before Hansen with a prideful stride. Which one are you buying? Hansen asked, blinking. I would like them both. The man looked at the woman near him. He puffed his chest and spoke with a raised voice, as if to signify the wealth he possessed. Ordinarily, pet beast souls weren't very expensive. The expensive variants were the high-class pet beast souls that were able to do combat. He saw that Hans Sin's pets were so small and cute, and naturally assumed they couldn't do combat. It was because of this that he didn't think they would cost much. If you want them both, I'll give you 30% off. At the low price of 7 billion. Hansen was in a good mood, so he was willing to take the time to joke with the pompous fellow. A big place like the Devil Shelter sold sacred blood beast souls for 100 to 200 million. If it was just a sacred blood pet, it'd be much cheaper, around the dozen million range. Seven billion? You think that's a super pet or something? The man scoffed, and it was obvious he was aware of the existence of super beast souls. You are right, Hansen said in his heart. But what his mouth actually said was, Although this is not a super pet, it has been with me for a very long time. I like it a lot. Unless you cough up the seven billion, I won't sell. The man madly pointed at Hansen with his finger. He then said something that shocked. Hansen, fine. I'll buy them for seven billion. Chapter 654 The Creature That Came From Devil's Mountain Hansen looked at the man with uncertain eyes, not sure whether he was being serious or if he was merely joining in with the jest. Seven billion was not a small amount, and generally, even the richest of people never carried such money around with them. For that price, are you certain? Hansen, still looking, asked the man. Of course I am, the man responded, with absolute confidence. Give me the money, and I'll sell them to you, Hansen said, smiling. Do you really think I have seven billion in my pockets, at this very moment? Give me your communication number, and when I return to the Alliance, I will contact you and wire you the money, the man said. Okay. Hansen did not give the man his communication number, just his virtual community account number on Skynet, as a way for the man to find him. Then, both of them exited the shelter together. Back in the Alliance, they both logged into the virtual community and went to meet each other. Hansen did not believe there was such a loser out there with that much money. He found it staggering when the man immediately came and saw him again. Friend, might I have a word with you? The guy had a peculiar face as he approached. What? 
You don't want to buy them anymore? Hansen was cracking up with laughter. No. Is that what you really think? I have a different proposition, that's all. How about if I give you 50 million, you lend me the pets for no more than three days? I will return them to you in three days, without a single hair on their furry coats having been brought harm. The man smiled. 50 million is petty pocket change. This sort of exchange would require at least 100 million, but I can only loan you the black cat. The white pet is not up for grabs, by any means. Hansen immediately knew what the man was implying, so he tried his best not to laugh. I accept that. But when we return to the shelter, you'll have to play along, the man told Hans Sr. Hansen then agreed. Without wasting any time, the man sent Hansen 100 million and said, I'll buy you dinner. Sure, we can have dinner, but you have to promise me you'll take care of the pet. I've had it for a very long time, and I'm awfully fond of it, Hansen told him. Friend, if you don't believe that I, Lin Mei, will take good care of it, then believe in Lin Fong. He's my little brother. We have a contract together, so fear not. Lin Mei patted his puffed up chest. Lin Fong? Who? Hansen acted as if he didn't know the person, with a puzzled look. You really don't know who I am? Lin Mei was genuinely surprised. But after a while, he smiled and said, Well, it's fine if you don't know me. Just know that I am a trustable fellow, okay? Do you know Tang Jinliu? Hansen had to ask, as the person before him really did look like Lin Fo. Of course I know him. He's my little brother's best buddy. They even wear identical, matching pants together. They're inseparable. Do you know him too? Lin Mei asked in return. Then we aren't strangers. I am a good friend of Tang Jinliu. In Hansen's heart, however, he thought, I can't believe Lin Fong has a brother like this. I'm not sure if they're real brothers, though. Or just cousins. Ah, isn't that remarkable? Well, if that's the case, how about you offer me a discount, on the account we have such ties? No. Relations are relations, business is business, Hansen immediately rejected. They then discussed the details of their arrangements for the remainder of their time in the virtual community. After that, they returned to the shelter. They both went to meet each other back where they first left off. When Lin Mei arrived, he was holding his big boobied lady friend and had a displeased look. They approached Han Sin and Lin Mei said, Hey, that's not very fair. You said two for seven billion. Now you're increasing the price even more? I am too fond of them to part with them so easily. If you're still determined to buy them, the black one can be bought for seven billion. The little white fellow is not for sale. Well, that matters very little to me. Money runs like tap water for me. Very well, I will accept the black one for seven billion. I will buy the white one for seven billion as well. The only thing that concerns me is the happiness and contentment of my wife. I will spend as much as I must to keep her smiling. Oh, darling, you are so wonderful. The woman fawned and kissed Lin Mei. I already told you, only the black one is for sale. This little white ruffian is mine alone. Hansen, in his little show, was adamant about only going for the sale of Meowth. Eventually, Lin Mei conceded and purchased it. The woman, while holding Meowth in her hands, was beaming with joy and didn't complain at all. Ever since, a yarn was spun from the Devil's Mountain. It was a tale that recited the desperate lengths a little man would go to please a woman. This sorry man was said to have bought a useless pet cat for the whopping sum of seven billion. Brother Han, did you really sell that pet for the sum of seven billion? Wang Yuhang's mouth was wide open with disbelief as he looked at Han Sr. He said he was from the Lin family. His name was Lin Mei. He said he was the big brother of Lin Fong. If you don't know him, then he must be a liar, Hansen said. Lin Mei? That womanizer? It had crossed my mind as to which wretch could be a sorry enough loser to pay such a sum. It was him. Eh? Wang Yuhang now understood. The Lin family really has someone like that in their midst? Hansen was surprised to learn that Lin Mei was a genuine member of the Lin family, as he half suspected he hadn't been truthful about his identity. Wang Yuhang nodded and said, He is real. All right. He is Lin Feng's cousin. He should be much older than him and of a comparable age to Lin Weiwei. Before Lin Weiwei became famous, this Lin Mei was renowned as a genius of sorts. It was short lived and a credit that only applied during his teenage years. Before long, he became addicted to the carnal pleasures of women and soon after, he was widely referred to as the greatest loser of the Lin family. His father, however, funds his every desire and as a result, Lin Mei is very rich. 
The figure of seven billion is little to him. I don't stay current with what he gets up to anymore, and he rarely shows up at familial events, anyway. It was nice to get a quick sneak peek today. A loser, huh? Hansen lifted his lips but didn't say any more. As they continued walking down the street, a commotion of some sort seemed to be occurring further down. Many evolvers were running down towards the gate of the shelter. Wang Yuhang quickly started asking about what was going on, to which someone responded a powerful creature had emerged from the Devil's Mountain and brought ruin to three different shelters. Now, it had come here. Lu Hui had issued a command, instigating his men-to-man -men rally for combat and halt the advance of the creature. Quickly, many evolvers amassed and marched in unison beyond the walls of the shelter, out to the trail the monster rampaged along. Lu Hui had already gotten there with his own little regiment, but they hadn't started their attack yet. If Lu Hui takes this threat so seriously, surely it must be a super creature, Hansen thought. Then, he turned to Wang Yuhang and told him, we should go check it out, too. They exited town, and when they reached the plains of battle, countless evolvers were gathering. There were also other people in their midst, who seemed to have arrived just so they could enjoy the coming spectacle and watch the battle with glee. After walking a dozen miles, they heard the trumpeting of a loud elephant. Hansen said to himself, is that the white bone elephant from the Devil's Mountain? The same thought coursed through Wang Yuhang's mind. They both turned to look at each other, with a look fright on their faces. The white bone elephant was far too terrifying a foe, and in one mouthful, it had gobbled up a berserk sacred blood creature. It was undoubtedly a monster from the upper echelon of super creatures. With its hulking size, stopping its approach would be no small feat. They walked forward for another few miles before they saw it. A white bone elephant was hastily marching down the trail, producing tremors with each step. The humans around it were like ants. Chapter 655 Berserk Super Creature Lu Hui was quickly realizing that the bone elephant was indestructible. He called for his archers to fire arrows at it from another direction, in an attempt to at least draw its attention away from its current course, so it could be led away from the devil's shelter it currently was galloping towards. If it reached the shelter, the shelter would be destroyed. The mounted bowmen were directly under Lu Huey's command. They started provoking the bone elephant with a tight, tidy formation that shifted and weaved its way to the accompaniment of a drumbeat. Near Lu Hui, bannermen often shouted and gave commands to precisely position the soldiers. Hansen watched the battle unfold from a mountain peak. He sighed and said, that is a real battle commander. I can effectively command around ten people. But for a fight like this, with 20,000 soldiers hinged upon my fingertips and vocal cords, there is no way I could keep up. This Lu Hui is a remarkable character. Hansen observed Lu Hui's command intently. The more he watched, the more interested he became. Everything in this world was connected, so one method could be used in a number of different situations. The art of Lu Hui's battle command was educational for Han Senator. He compared the spectacle to the Dong Shui Sutra and felt as if he was learning a lot. In past commands, Hansen had looked for the details of a formation, which meant he paid attention to the most minute details. He could control ten people to adapt a situation to suit his exact needs. But this sort of battle was taking place on a far greater venue with far more actors playing a role. Lu Hui was a conductor for the play at large and his commands were dedicated to the stage itself, and not the precise hemming of its curtains that Hansen would pay attention to. It showed another side of command to Hansen, and it made him enthusiastic to watch. No wonder he is the Blue Blood Special Forces leader. With his command power, he is by far the most talented. It is no wonder he is able to control the entire faction, Hansen complimented Lu Hui. But Wang Yuhang, who was near Hansen, then said, If you want to expand the goddess army, Lu Hui and the person in the north will be your greatest enemies. You are right. And as powerful as Lu Hui is, I can only suspect that the person in the north is of comparable might. Expansion of my army might prove to be a controversial problem. Han Xin paused for a brief while, but then smiled and continued to say, but we are separated by the Devil's Mountain. It's only a matter of time before this hurdle between shelters is conquered. But still, I suppose it is too soon to think about such matters. Many riders had splintered off into smaller groups and fired arrows at their foe from varying directions altogether. The arrows themselves did not deal any damage to the bone elephant, but they did enrage it. It continued its rampant stomping in an attempt to squish any hapless, unlucky humans that it could catch underfoot. 
It was a fierce super creature, yes, but it wasn't all that fast, and it wasn't all that smart, either. It was easily being kied by the archers that circled it on their mounts, resulting in the bone elephant spinning around like a headless chicken trying to catch them. Not a single fatality had been suffered. The more Hansen watched, the more interested he became. He learned more and more about what it took to devise a formation and maintain control over people under his command. All of a sudden, the bone elephant trumpeted loudly. It took off, uncaring for the hard rain of arrows that tickled it. Now Lu Hui is in trouble. The bone elephant has taken off in the direction of Devil's Shelter. Wang Yuhang furrowed his brow. But Lu Hui did not panic. He was as composed as ever. He rallied his bannermen to his side and had them issue a few commands. Suddenly, a few evolvers lined up beside him. They ran towards the bone elephant, and with their speed, you could tell they were not ordinary evolvers. They had unlocked their gene locks, at the very least. One of them was Lei Hung Wu. In his hands, he wielded a massive lance that crackled and sparked with an aura of electricity. These few evolvers surrounded the bone elephant. They still wouldn't have the power to slay the fiend, but under Lu Hui's command, they were able to start kiting the beast once more. Lu Hui's mind was clear and certain. He himself knew that the monster could not be bested in combat, so he was attempting to lure it someplace far from Devil's Shelter where it could no longer deal harm to humans. Lei Hung Wu is powerful. Although Hansen had heard all about Lei Hung Wu's power from Wang Yuhang, seeing his tremendous lance skills firsthand was a different thing altogether, and he simply had to compliment the man. What is the point in him being powerful? He belongs to the others now. Wang Yuhang sighed. Hansen smiled but did not reply. He merely complimented the fellow, and despite being aligned with the lightning element, he wasn't as strong as the silver fox, anyway. Although he was a strong man, Hansen did not see the point in earnestly competing for his enlistment. What Hansen had in mind was finding a powerful archer to join his ranks. Although Hansen himself could be an archer, it'd be a waste of the berserk flaming wreck spike he had just created. From now on, Hansen would have to specialize in close quarter combat, so he'd need someone to fill in the ranged battler position. Oh golly, the elephant looks as if it's about to throw a tantrum. Wang Yuhang screamed in fear. Hansen took a closer look and saw the bone elephant's eyes turning red. That color of red became a physical haze that swirled itself around the bones which, in turn, changed their color, too. Oh snap, this fight is about to get dirty. Hansen was shocked, too. If the bone elephant was turning berserk, it would become a berserk super creature. With the increased speed and power it would earn, there would be no way for the riders down below to kite it as they previously had. They would be squished into jelly, forming a river of blood. Lu Hui took notice of this sudden, frightening change, as well. His face finally showed a flicker of emotion and a blue aura of light emerged from his body. He summoned a lance and threw it towards the bone elephant. Pang! With a flash of blue light, the lance struck one of the bone elephant's ears. It did not break anything, but the creature did feel pain. It trumpeted aloud in madness and charged at Lu Hui. Lu Hui was shouting at his army, commanding them to assist as he took supremacy in leading the bone elephant off into the wilds. Roar! The bone elephant only took a few steps before it gave up chasing Lu Hui. It turned around and fixed its gaze back on the devil's shelter. It was starting to look like something was attracting it there. At this point, the skull and trunk of the elephant had become bright red. It wasn't blood, it was the red color that seeped from behind its eyes. Curse it. It really is going berserk. It's losing its mind, as well. It doesn't even care about the attacks from Lu Hui and his people. It seems to be heading for the shelter, at all costs. Hansen frowned. Although Devil's Shelter had nothing to do with him, the shelter was home to millions of people. Hansen was a human, and he didn't want to see his own kind slain mercilessly. Lu Hui's body was shining blue. He kept on attacking the bone elephant with the lance in his hand, but despite his attempts, the creature continued to ignore him and simply became more and more red. Despite the barrage of attacks dealt from the lance, it stomped onwards. Lei Hung Wu and his people did their best to attack it, just as Lu Hui did. It was all to no avail, however, as it now seemed that nothing could divert its attention away from the shelter. But that being said, such attacks really were like tickles, when accounting for the size and might of the beast. The bone elephant's speed had definitely increased now. The body was like a small mountain, running past on its own legs. 
The riders and their mounts that couldn't get out of the way in time were squashed beneath its feet. Puddles and streams of blood formed, and human allies were reduced to mush. Everyone was frightened. Chapter 656 The Goddess Army's 13th General The formation failed. The bone elephant was too quick and the riders were unable to exit its path in time. Many of them were stepped on, crushed beneath the elephant's feet. Their squelchy remains were scattered and stained across each of the elephant's subsequent footprints. Fear began to take hold of their hearts, one which could not be kept at bay. The strength of that fearsome beast was far beyond what any of the fighters were expecting. Its unheeding rampage now sent chills down the spines of all who looked at it. Evacuate the shelter. Have everyone exit there at once, Lu Hui calmly decreed. If they did not give up the shelter now, countless people would fall victim to the elephant and the place would be lost. By having the place evacuated, at least the fatalities incurred would be far fewer upon the shelter's destruction. The order was relayed to Devil's Shelter. Without delay, the people there packed up their things and began to flee. But the berserk elephant was too fast and it had already reached the gate before the majority of the people inside had even reached for their bags. Anything that was in the elephant's path was stomped and crushed into dust. Even the ancient trees that were in its way were brought down with the littlest of difficulty. This behavior even applied to boulders and craggy outcrops that were in its way. Ten-meter-high stones were smashed through instead of avoided. The sight of it fearlessly annihilating everything in its path made their hearts pound. The faces of the inhabitants were all pale as the berserk elephant prepared to strike the walls of the shelter. The gutless sorts were paralyzed in fear. The earth shook with each step of the berserk elephant. It did not slow down on its approach, and just as it had rampaged down the mountains, it seemed to be charging headlong into the walls. Big dumb elephant, I am the thirteenth general of the goddess army, Wang Yuhang. Your attempt to destroy this stronghold of prosperity will not succeed. As the tusks of the elephant almost shattered the gate, just as the final flicker of hope seemed to extinguish, a man appeared in the sky. He flapped his wings with great speed, shouting at the berserk bone elephant like a god. The unstoppable berserk elephant heard his voice and stopped dead in its tracks. It turned around to look at the man in the air. Everyone was flabbergasted. None of the other elites could pull its attention and attract it away from the shelter, and yet, for this one man, the elephant turned to pay attention. Big dumb elephant, my boss man will not allow you to bring harm to the good civilians that populate this place. If your balls are as hardy as your bones, follow me to the goddess army so that we can bury you in the grave you have so happily dug for yourself. Wang Yuhang shouted at the bone elephant at the top of his lungs, then he flapped his wings and flew away. The berserk elephant trumpeted to the sky and followed Wang Yuhang. No one could believe what they had seen, and they weren't even sure what was happening anymore. The man seemed to be able to contact the fearsome creature, the same creature that had ignored every other human. The fact that it so effortlessly followed the man after his speech was unbelievable. Lu Hui and Lei Hung were surprised. They knew exactly what they had just seen, and they knew Wang Yuhang was taking advantage of his profound unluckiness. They knew such a thing was possible, but they were mostly surprised by the fact that he had chosen to put his life on the line in an attempt to save Devil's Shelter. Holy crap! This man is OP. This goddess army must be some angelic force. It sounds so powerful. They're gods. They rock. The goddess army must be a supergiant army. If a general had that much power, I wonder what the leader of such an army must be like? Did you skip the part where he said he was only the 13th general? That means there are 12 others who are beyond him in power. The leader must be strong enough to tear the skies asunder, then. Wang Yuhang. I will remember this man. The goddess shelter saved our lives. Woohoo! Hansen lent his berserk sacred blood wings to Wang Yuhang, so he could distract the berserk bone elephant and lead it away. He did not expect him to have so much flair, however, and his boisterous act in the skies above the shelter seemed so genuine. People who did not understand what was truly going on would believe the bone elephant actually listened to what he had to say. But the truth was that the berserk bone elephant was only chasing the man due to his terrible luck. Hansen and Zero went ahead first, thinking that the berserk bone elephant wasn't actually heading for Devil's Shelter. The shelter just happened to be in its way. So, Hansen made Wang Yuhang lead the bone elephant around Devil's Shelter. The beast could not fly, so there was no immediate danger, and as soon as Wang Yuhang was done, he could return to Hansen and allow it to go where it would. 
The elephant followed Wang Yuhang away from Devil's Shelter for about 50 miles, then he took off further into the sky. The berserk bone elephant continued running forward, not paying any attention to Devil's Shelter. Boss Mun, your berserk sacred blood wings are wondrous. Would it be against your desire if I requested that you lend them to me for a few days? Wang Yuhang asked, with a big smile upon his face. Don't talk crap. Give me them back at once. And can I ask what kind of BS drivel you were spouting back there? Hansen took back his sacred blood wings as he asked. I was raising awareness of the goddess shelter. A deed like this will garner us much renown, and you'll have people crawling over each other in a bid to be enlisted. Wang Yuhang laughed. And what is up with the 13th general nonsense? Hansen asked. Think about it. If people heard this, they'd assume we have swathes of elites in our ranks, enough so that we need at least 13 generals to manage them all. And if I was the 13th, then people would naturally assume there were 12 others who were even stronger than me. We would become the bee's knees, Wang Yuhang explained, with a proud and boisterous expression smeared across his face. Hansen was not sure how to respond, but he ultimately believed it to be a good thing. If the goddess shelter were to become more well-known, then inviting elites into the ranks of its army would be considerably easier. Hansen did not know where he might find 12 other generals, but he figured he might not actually need them. Any candidates for future generals could begin at 14. There would be no reason for anyone to find out who the other 12 were, after all. Hansen wanted to see where the berserk bone elephant was going, so he followed its shadow from a good distance. Little uncle, do you know which area lies ahead? Hansen asked Wang Yuhang as he watched the bone elephant go further and further in a direction he wasn't familiar with. Hmm, let me think. Wang Yuhang looked ahead and then, with a quick discoloration of his face, said, I think this leads to the haunted peach forest. What is the haunted peach forest? Hansen asked. It is a peach forest. The peach trees there are massive, each one being at least 100 meters tall. You can barely see the tops of such trees and humans who go there tend to get lost with the greatest of ease. Furthermore, countless frightening monsters lurk beneath its boughs and many who enter there do not return. After a while, Wang Yuhang lowered his head in thought. Then, he said, fortunately, this is the season of the peach flowers opening. It isn't the season of peach production, so it shouldn't be too dangerous. Why is that? Hansen looked confused. During the season for peaches, many powerful creatures visit there for a taste. That would also be the most dangerous time to even think about approaching the haunted peach forest, Wang Yuhang explained. But now it is the flower opening season, correct? If the elephant was hungry for peaches, why would he be heading there now? Hansen furrowed his brows. Chapter 657 The Holy Statue Under the Peach Tree The peach forest was red, like the blush of a young lady. The place seemed to go on forever, and it was filled with the energy of youth. When Hansen walked into the peach tree forest, he was quite surprised. All the peach trees had dragonflies flying around them. The pink flowers on the trees were wide open and rivers of them flowed down to the ground in harmonic beauty. The scent of the flowers could be smelled from far away, and the sweet fragrance brought a smile to the faces of all who encountered it. It was like the scent of a young lady. The berserk bone elephant did not care for anything in its way, and it continued to beeline straight for the forest. As it approached the eaves of the tall boughs, however, it slowed down. It didn't blusterously stomp its way through the forest as it had on its way there. It tiptoed gently and lightly around the trees, venturing as quietly as it could, as if to avoid waking up a sleeping beauty. The berserk bone elephant's red hue started to rescind and go lighter, which surprised Han Sin and Wang Yuhang. Never before had they seen a creature revert back from a berserk state. It looks like the bone elephant didn't truly become berserk. It must be some sort of ability that it possesses, Hansen said, as he pondered the curious trait. I suppose you're correct. Should we enter? At the edge of the forest, Wang Yuhang looked in, but did not dare take a step forward. How about this, little uncle? You return to the shelter and wait for us. We will take a look. Hansen was worried something might happen if Wang Yuhang accompanied him. Sure. Wang Yuhang quickly agreed. He turned and took off running to Devil's Shelter without looking back. Hansen thought it odd, as he'd never seen him demonstrate such haste before. Having thought about it some more, Hansen understood. Earlier, Wang Yuhang appeared before everyone in Devil's Shelter as a glorious savior of the people. Now, he was eager to finish the show. Hansen wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. 
Wang Mingming's little uncle was a legendarily strange man, with no equal in the entire world. Do you want to go back and wait for me too? Hansen looked at Zero, who didn't say much. She just stepped closer to Hansen, signifying she was keen to continue. Hansen, without saying anything more, walked into the peach forest with Zero by his side. With the silver fox accompanying them, it was unlikely they'd suffer much trouble. If a creature were to encounter them, it would most likely run off. The blood-red color that tainted the bone elephant's appearance had now entirely faded, with its bones turning to their original gray and white color. It was still walking incredibly slowly, as well, as if it was afraid to damage the trees. Because it was going at this pace, Hansen and Zero could follow its passage with ease. The peach forest was massive, and it was impossible for them to be certain of how big it was. They followed the elephant for a whole day, and the environment did not change much, as vast streams of flowers continued to drape the sides of the trees and color the forest floor. The elephant continued to tread softly, as if it was walking through a sacred place and was afraid of making it dirty. Hansen constantly looked around, but he only saw trees and flowers for as far as his sight could reach. There didn't seem to be anything inherently special about the peach forest, from what he could tell. They hadn't seen a single other creature on their way, either. Even with the silver fox by their side, they should have still been able to see some, or notice signs of them having been in the area. The entire time, since they first entered the forest, the elephant was the only creature they had found. Hansen activated his gene lock every now and again, using his senses to assess the surroundings and analyze whether or not there were any dangers in the vicinity. Despite his best attempts, there was nothing. The silver fox could not discover anything, either. Quietly, it continued to lie in Zero's arms. The moon was in the sky, and under the moonlight, the ocean of peach flowers looked even more beautiful. When a breeze danced between the trees, it rustled the flowers as petals submitted themselves to the pull of the wind. As gorgeous as it was, the entire affair seemed somewhat surreal. Hansen and Zero both sat upon Golden Roar. As she sat graciously between the rain of flowers and petals, Zero's pretty face graced the view as a mesmerizingly beautiful image. Hansen could not help but pick up one of the flowers and place it in her hair. Now, she was perfect. Now you are even prettier. Hansen looked at Zero, who almost seemed to be one with the flowers. He was not sure whether her beauty was accentuated by the flower or if the beauty of the flowers were accentuated by her presence. Zero, who had always appeared emotionless, started to look red in the cheeks. This made her even prettier, like some fairy that lived amidst the peach flower trees. The bone elephant, by this point, had been wandering through the forest for a few days now. Just when Hansen started to feel lost in the seemingly endless peach forest, he suddenly saw a giant peach tree up ahead. The trunk of the tree was bigger than the rest, leading upwards into the heavens. The flowers that graced and decorated its body spread out at the top like stars in the sky. The bone elephant seemed to be heading towards the tree. What is this strangely big peach tree? Hansen observed the peach tree from afar and couldn't believe its size. He did not sense any danger and neither did the silver fox. All the silver fox did was stare at the peach tree and all Hansen could do was wonder what it was thinking about. Since they were here already, Hansen wanted to see what the elephant wanted. Hansen followed the elephant, but stayed a safe distance away from it, not daring to get too close. The giant bone elephant was heading straight for the perplexingly huge peach tree. As it approached, the massive elephant didn't look so big anymore. The elephant walked beneath the boughs of the tree gently and knelt. Then, it kowtowed before the tree, lowering its head as if it was praying before it. Hansen was frozen. He did not believe that a super creature like this, a monstrous elephant no less, would pray in front of a tree. It was unbelievable. What is this strange peach tree? Does something more powerful than a super creature even exist? Why would the elephant adore the tree and show so much respect? Hansen was puzzled. He watched the bone elephant cowed out before the tree for a very long time. But what happened next was even more unnerving. Under the moonlight, the bone elephant sat beside the tree in a human pose. With all the flowers flying around it, it appeared to be meditating. With the forest lit with the moonlight and the flowers and petals continuing to skate the breeze, the bone elephant's body started to resemble the flowers from the peach tree. Then, it started glowing. The gray and white bones now looked like jade crystals, which seemed to exude a holy light of some sort. 
Even the red eyes of the elephant seemed to fade away, and it didn't seem as if it wanted to kill anything anymore. The whole bone elephant was like a sacred Buddha beneath the peach tree, with a halo of divine light coming from it. What is going on here? The longer Hansen watched, the more confused he became. Chapter 658 The Child of a Super Creature The bone elephant continued to sit beneath the tree without moving. A while later, Hansen heard a noise come from deeper within the peach forest, a sound that seemed to be coming their way. It wasn't long before it appeared. It was a small pink snake, slithering towards the giant peach tree. Quietly, it rested against the base of it. A blue tiger appeared from another direction and also sat down near the tree. Wings could be heard flapping in the sky, and looking up, a red-crowned crane was descending to the ground near the tree to join in with the other creatures. And soon after that, a black bear arrived, carrying a cub. It also sat down near the bottom of the tree. In a short amount of time, many creatures had gathered at the base of the tree. Hansen was shocked at what he was seeing, particularly so due to how special and unique they all looked. He thought they might all have been super creatures. Hansen did not know why they were there. Was something from the peach tree attracting them? During Hansen's confusion, the silver fox jumped out of Zero's arms and trotted over to the big tree, too. Hansen was perplexed. He thought that the peach tree might have been emitting a pheromone to attract the creatures towards it. After a taking a few steps forward, the silver fox turned around and nodded its head to Hans Senator it looked as if it wanted him to follow. He was hesitant to comply, due to how many powerful creatures gathered up in one place and how dangerous it would be for him to go. Again, the silver fox flicked its head. Although the creatures were now undoubtedly aware of the silver fox's presence, they didn't bother doing anything about it. They hardly even looked its way. For the third time, the silver fox gestured for Hansen to join it. With gritted teeth, Hansen slowly withdrew from his shelter and tiptoed his way towards the peach tree. Hansen went forward as cautiously as he could. The moment he noticed something was off, or if the creatures even looked at him wrong, he'd take off running in the other direction. Zero, to his surprise, was less fearful. With glee, she ran to catch up with the silver fox. They were out in plain sight, before the creatures near the tree, but nothing happened. The creatures simply continued to sit where they were. With his heart playing hopscotch, Hansen followed the silver fox to the tree. After choosing a spot, they sat down near it. Aside from the bone elephant and the two bears, they were closest in proximity to the actual bark of the tree. Two meters away from Hansen was the black bear. Although it was not as big as the bone elephant, it was at least 10 meters tall. Although it was kowtowing, it was like a giant truck, and its breathing was loud. This was the first time he had ever gotten so close with a creature outside of combat. It made Hansen feel quite wonderful, as not a single creature showed any sign of wanting to attack him. All the creatures here had become animals, fond of peace. No matter the species or breed, they had all come together to kowtow before the tree. The silver fox was lying on the ground that had been dressed in loose flower petals. It closed its eyes and breathed calmly with a mellow rhythm. It was something Hansen had seen before. After practicing Dong Shiwe Sutra, he would always see the silver fox in such a fashion, for a brief while. The other creatures weren't too different. While they all lay down, they each breathed with a calm, unique rhythm. Does this strange peach tree provide boons and advancements to one's training? Hansen wondered to himself. After a while, Hansen decided to try to practice Dong Shiwe Sutra. Hansen began training and felt as if there was a special energy being absorbed into his body by the Dong Shiwe Sutra. The pace of his Dong Shiwe Sutra sped up, as if it was reacting to the strange energy. This really is something special. Hansen continued practicing, and eventually, his body began to produce a pleasant smell. The scent combined with the fragrance of the peaches and began to permeate the atmosphere. When Hansen finished a cycle, he noticed that his Dong Shiwe Sutra had improved far more than it usually did. This surprised him. But when Hansen looked at the other creatures, he was surprised. Perhaps it was because the fragrance combined with the scent of the flowers. But when he saw the silver fox again, he could actually see the energy inside him. He could see the pleasant smell inside the silver fox that had not been refined yet. Hansen looked at the other creatures and was even more surprised. Many creatures were in the area, and it seemed as if they had all absorbed the pleasant fragrance of the Dong Shiwe Sutra. Strangely, they all seemed to have a different reaction to its absorption. The pleasant scent inside the pink snake, the blue beast, the red-crowned crane, 
and the big black bear was all blurry, being absorbed by their bodies. But in the cub and the bone elephant, Hansen saw that the energy was flowing inside them in a rhythmic beat. It looked like a human chi gong. That's not right. The black bear and the cub are of the same kind. So why the difference between the two? Hansen was shocked while looking at what was going on. Not long after, Hansen's pleasant fragrance had been refined by the cub and bone elephant. The crane and snake were continuing to refine it slowly, but Hansen could still sense it inside them. Hansen looked at the gourd in his hand. It was already used to absorbing Hansen's pleasant smell, and by now, it had already refined the scent. Hansen continued to observe the other creatures and then had a horrible thought. It did not matter whether it was the silver fox, the black bear cub, or the gourd in his hand. The elephant was the only creature he was not sure about. Creatures were usually birthed by their mothers, not their nests. The silver fox, the cub, and the gourd were spawned in their nests, whereas the others had been birthed by their mothers. That made Hansen think back on the golden roarer. He wasn't sure about the big golden roarer, but when the small one died, it left behind its life geno essence and body. If the big golden roarer and the elephant were birthed by a creature, does that mean the children of super creatures are different than the super creatures themselves? Hansen theorized. But this train of thought only led to more and more questions. Why did some super creatures only leave their life essence behind and not their actual bodies? If the second or third generation of super creatures could leave their bodies, then there must have been something special inside them. Just like the silver fox and the cub, they were the children of super creatures, and it looked like they had special abilities that were different than their mothers. Chapter 659 Toxic Dragon Drill Usually, after Hansen finished a training cycle of the Dongxian Sutra, his body would be filled up and require a cool-down period in which the energy was digested. Training more while he was still full yielded no additional benefits and was therefore pointless. But underneath that great tree, something strangely wonderful happened. After a very short while, he felt as if the energy was gone. He decided to try to practice the Dongshen Sutra again, and, lo and behold, he was renewed with fresh power once more. Hansen began training his Dongshen Sutra again, and before long, his body was charged up again. Hansen used this time to observe the bone elephant, which continued to look holy. The elephant was like a jade statue. Seeing it for the first time, no one would have guessed how cruel and murderous it actually was. The bodies of the other creatures were glowing as well. Hansen couldn't tell what the light was exactly. He just thought it was different than usual. Hansen watched the energy flow through the bone elephant's body and tried to record a visualization of it in his mind. Hansen did not know how long this concordant situation would last. So, he took the chance to remember how the elephant harnessed its energy in the event the technique might one day become useful. The peach flowers were open for two weeks. During that time, Hansen managed to record the energy flow of both the elephant and the cub. When the peach flowers on the trees began to wilt, the silver fox tugged at Hansen's pants and tried to pull him away from the area. Hansen felt something was wrong as well. As the peach flowers began to wilt more and more, the creatures seemed to be getting more and more restless. Hansen noticed a slight reddish hue beginning to tint the eyes of the bone elephant. It looked as if it would soon resume its murderous rampage. He didn't dare stay any longer, and so he decided to depart with zero before anything went awry. If the creatures started to go berserk, with his small body, there was no chance he'd be able to withstand an attack dealt by any of them. For the two weeks he had been there, Hansen constantly repeated his practice of the Dongshen Sutra. His body had been hungry for it the entire time. Having received so much additional experience training with it, his Dongshen Sutra had greatly improved. Hansen felt as if he had just about touched the first tier of the Dongshan Sutra, and all he'd need was some sort of extra push to get the gene lock open. Hansen had thought it would take a few years to reach this point, but his two weeks under the tree had saved a lot of time. That giant peach tree was the most remarkable of boons. If the open flowers of the tree have such a remarkable power, if it grew peaches and I ate one, I wonder what would happen. Hansen decided that when the mystic peach tree grew its harvest of peaches, he would return to this place and collect some, no matter what it took. But Hansen imagined that when the mystic peach tree did grow its peaches, there would undoubtedly be chaos. Nabbing a few peaches for himself would most likely prove difficult. The silver fox now seemed to be in a rush, wanting to lead Hansen out of the forest as quickly as it could. 
They only slowed down when they had moved beyond the eaves of the forest. At that point, the silver fox gleefully returned to Hansen's shoulder. Hansen could faintly hear the screams of nefarious beasts in the forest. Not wanting to hang around any longer, he ran off with Zero. When Hansen returned to Devil's Shelter, the bone elephant did not return the way it came, to the best of his knowledge. It was as if it had simply disappeared, and it was never seen or heard from again. Wang Yuhang, however, was a household name around Devil's Shelter, and many people became aware of the existence of the goddess army. They also knew that Wang Yuhang was its 13th general. The people who were not privy to the truth believed the goddess army to be an incredibly strong angelic host. They thought it was responsible for slaying the bone elephant by leading it away, saving the shelter in the process. Another two weeks passed, and the flaming wreck spike was still in the process of evolving. It looked like Super Beast souls took a long time to evolve. Hansen estimated it would take another two weeks for the evolution to complete. Back in the Alliance, Hansen considered choosing a new hypergeno art that would go well with his Flaming Rex spike. Hansen conducted a lot of research, but found it difficult to select a skill that would suit his needs. The Flaming Rex spike was neither greatsword nor lance, and he couldn't even use it like a club. No wonder the shopkeeper sold it to me so cheaply with a quick cash trade agreement. Pa, this thing is too unpopular. Hansen continued looking at skills in the hope he'd eventually find one that would go well with his Flaming Rex spike. Hansen did not expect a perfect match, but one that was 70% would do. If he found one like that, then he'd be happy to modify it to his needs. Hansen had almost browsed through all the S-Class Hypergeno arts, from most popular to least popular without finding one that he wanted. The creepy-looking weapon was far too rare. It was a heavy weapon, and it could only be held like a great sword with both hands. If you held it with one hand, then it would require a tremendous amount of strength. It wasn't like a sword, which could be swung around quickly. This weapon was tailored for powerful, gruesome blows through lance-like thrusting or club-like crushing. But these two forms of attack were best suited to the weapons that were designed for those purposes, lances and clubs respectively. The flaming wreck spike seemed as if it would be awkward to use. For a two-meter long, single-handed weapon, it looked extremely powerful, but it was a shame that it was so difficult to wield. In the end, Hansen went to look for Professor by Ishan in the Saint Hall. Hansen drew the shape of the flaming wreck spike and presented it to the professor to see if he knew of any suitable skills for the weapon. Hold on a second. By Ishan went peruse further information. Half an hour later, he returned to his communicator and told Hansen, This weapon is very rare. But I do remember one fellow who created a weapon that operates similarly. It may look a little different, yes, but functionally it's the same. It is a single-handed weapon that is most suitable for jabbing or thrusting and heavy swings. The man created a skill for it, but it wasn't anything exceptional. It was only ranked as an A-class skill here in the Saint Hall. It was called Toxic Dragon Drill. You should take a look at it if you're interested. Thank you, Professor Bai. Hansen had no other choice. Being only A-class, it was far worse than Hansen expected. Professor by himself had told him that there were no S-class hypergeno arts that suited it. Hansen returned to the Saint Hall and purchased the A-class hypergeno art toxic dragon drill. Hansen observed it intently. Although it was only A-class, it was indeed quite suitable for the flaming wreck spike. It mainly employed thrusts and heavy smashes. The thrusting component featured a spinning technique, as well. Hansen was pretty good with it, right off the bat. After a brief look, he was already performing exceptionally well with it. Chapter 660, Completion of the Flaming Rex Spikes Evolution In the deep sea, Hansen punched a three-meter-long jellyfish to death and dragged it back into the Crystal Palace. An angel looked at the jellyfish's lifeless corpse curiously. Recently, she had eaten a lot of sacred blood-class food and had lost track of how many creatures she had been fed from the sea. Hansen believed the angel was close to unlocking her combat mode. She had been eating less in recent times, so it had to be a sign that she was changing somewhat. Hansen thought if she unlocked her combat mode, he'd have himself a nice extra fighter. It'd be easier to kill super creatures in the future, with her by his side. Although Hansen had eaten a lot more sacred blood creatures lately, his sacred geno points weren't increasing as much as he would have liked because he couldn't find any smaller varieties to kill. His sacred geno points were above the halfway point now, sitting at a total of 51. It wasn't too far from being maxed out. 
In regards to the fire scale T-Rex's life geno essence, Hansen had yet to find a way in which he might eat it. As of yet, he didn't have a single super geno point. But even so, Hansen's fitness level was now over 150. Hansen guessed that when his sacred geno point amount was filled, he'd be within the fitness range of 180 to 200. If he had super geno points, perhaps he wouldn't even have to become a surpasser to reach 300 and become a celestial being. But killing super creatures was no small feat, and how to eat their life geno essences was something he had yet to figure out. Hansen watched the angel as she ate. He suddenly felt the sea of soul shaking. The flaming T-Rex burst out, signifying the finishing of the flaming Rex Spike's evolution. He noticed the flaming T-Rex was living up to its name, as its whole body was wreathed in flame. It looked like a super T-Rex, but the body was blazing with red flames instead of gold flames. Hansen looked at the flaming T-Rex's introduction and saw the berserk title. He summoned the flaming Rex Spike. The creepy, blood-red weapon was now blazing with a red flame. It looked very mighty. The fire of the weapon produced an incredibly intense heat. If it touched someone's body, Hansen imagined it wouldn't take much effort to instantly roast the skin and flesh. This is a scary weapon. Hansen gave it a swing and liked how it felt. It seemed as powerful as he had hoped it would be. Now that I have the weapon, I should find a super creature to test it on. Which one should I go for? Hansen wondered. It was not difficult to find a super creature. Though most of them resided in the deepest, most secluded mountain ranges, gullies, or swamps, he'd encounter one in no time if he brought Wang Yuhang along. The primary concern, however, was whether or not he could truly kill such a creature. Hansen's ideal target would be the Red Cloud Donkey. It seemed as if it would be easier to kill, since it didn't pose much of a significant risk. The biggest problem was the raven that lived near it. No matter how strong the flaming wreck spike was, it would not matter if Hansen could not match the speed of such a foe and land a single hit. He was only afraid that before he even had a chance to raise his weapon, the raven would have already sliced his head clean off his shoulders. The target Hansen wanted to hunt the most was something that was slow and did not have a weak body. Something like the big black bear would have been fine to fight, as well. A big-bodied creature would be fine, as the flaming wreck spike was most certainly long enough to reach it. If Hansen did go up against the bear and struck its head with all his might, he only imagined that the creature would be unable to withstand such a blow. But the peach forest was too creepy to return to, and he knew more than one super creature resided below its shadowed boughs. Hansen did not dare risk returning there, and since he wanted to bring Wang Yuhang with him, he knew they'd be swarmed by super creatures the moment they stepped inside. If he didn't bring Wang Yuhang, the creatures would be too powerful and their speed would be higher than Hansen's. It would be impossible to thwomp a quick target with such a big weapon. With Wang Yuhang's knack for stealing an enemy's attention, Hansen would have plenty of time to whack it the exact way he would want. And if he did that, he was figuring he might be able to take half the life of such a creature away at once. Leader, Lu Hui is here to see you. Back in the goddess shelter, Yang Monli delivered Hansen a surprise visitor. What is he doing here? There is no way he would come all the way out here to thank us for saving his shelter, would he? Hansen frowned and invited his guests in to see him. Leader Hui is so gracious, taking the time to come visit me. Hansen said, smiling at Lu Hui. I have come here to thank you for pulling the bone elephant away. There is also a deal I would like to strike with you, if you'd be so kind as to hear what I have to propose. Lu Hui smiled in return. There is no need to thank me, but I can always make room for more business ventures. Hansen noticed Lu Hui had not brought any gifts with him and was quickly disappointed. We believe we have found a super creature, but our power alone is not enough to kill it. Therefore, I would like to cooperate with the goddess shelter and take on this monster together. Lu Hui did not beat around the bush. What kind of super creature is it? Hansen's attention had been quickly snared. It is a wolf, Lu Hui answered. What kind of wolf? Hansen frowned, thinking Lu Hui was being too vague. Lu Hui laughed and said, It is the king of a few hundred thousand wolves. We have been unable to detect whether or not it has any elemental powers, but it is powerful. That much we do know. Its strength and speed are exceptional. A few hundred thousand wolves? A little dangerous, no? Hansen frowned again, thinking that was quite the pack for a wolf to lead. If he agreed to lend his aid, it would be no trivial fight. Plus, if he wanted to kill it in the midst of the wolf pack, it'd be much harder. 
Fighting a super creature that was so low would be a far easier task. It will be a difficult foe to overcome, I must confess. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be requesting your aid. But the Wolf King's body is very balanced. It doesn't seem to have any outstanding attributes. The pelt is not too sturdy, its speed is not too fast, and its strength is nothing obscene. This super creature seems like a viable candidate for killing, Lu Hui explained. Hansen nodded in agreement. This super creature was tough, no doubt, but with the aid of other human allies, they definitely stand a chance. How will we cooperate? Hansen asked. I want you to help draw away the wolf pack. We can deal with the wolf king. Afterwards, aside from the beast's soul, the loot will be shared. It was obvious what Lu Hui wanted. Wang Yuhang's ability. Lu Hui had been both shocked and impressed by Wang Yuhang's ability to attract creatures when he saved Devil's Shelter. Sorry, if things are like that then we cannot cooperate. Hansen firmly rejected. Why? Lu Hui asked. If you want to cooperate with us, then we must be granted the final blow on the super creature. That's how it must be, Hansen stated coldly. That is a shame. Maybe next time? Eh? Lu Hui knew there was no point in pushing the subject further. Lu Hui did not think Hansen had the ability to kill a super creature. He only wanted Wang Yuhang's ability to attract creatures, but Hansen's ambitions were too big for him. Escort Lu Hui off the premises, Hansen commanded Yang Manli. Also, find out where he'll be fighting the wolf king he speaks of.